All right, guys, welcome on board one more time. And again, my name is Rafi, and today we're going to talk about first impressions of Canada. It's a very exciting topic with a lot of grammar attached to it, as always. So please hang around. As always, we have great offers waiting for you. So if you guys wait, there's always more to come. So please share with your friends so that more people can join us and make this lesson even livelier. And like, comment, so that we can interact, as always. So, you know, there's always a better way for you to learn a new language. And at LRDG, we do believe that. Now, whether you're a newcomer to Canada or a busy professional looking to go ahead, we are here to help you achieve your goals and dreams, just like we help thousands of professionals and countless others to boost their careers and improve their lives through language learning. Our unique and personal interactive method ensures you have the support you need around the clock. And our team of language training specialists and IT professionals come from a diverse cultural backgrounds, which means you get to decide when it's best for you to learn at your own pace based off of your own unique goals. All right. We know firsthand the challenge of learning a new language and the stress associated with being officially tested in it, especially for those of you who are taking the federal SLE exam. So we ensured that you pass a 90% mark. That's a nine zero, 90% mark at every stage of your journey to properly prepare you for that final test. Now, if you want to access our personalized training to go even further, you can always book a call with us or visit our website to talk to a representative online. And as I promised you, we do have a unique surprise for you guys. So we are offering a free placement test for everyone who joins us and even more. Reach out to us by email or over our website. You'll see it in the captions below. All right, you guys, thank you so much for joining. And today, like I said, we're going to be talking about your first impressions of Canada. And the grammar lesson is time clauses and a clause versus a sentence. This might help you along the way. So let me see, first of all, why my Instagram is not on par yet. All right, there you go. Now we're talking. Welcome, everyone. I see we have a few students already. Welcome, Lucero, Bernice. I love it. Beautiful. Welcome, Naomi. Dime, if I'm... At Forgive me, guys, if I'm not pronouncing your names correctly. Please correct me if you want in the chat and let this get, get this party started. Those of you who are with us from before, you know that we've been going through a series now. We talked about conditionals. We talked about social dilemmas, expressing opinions. If you guys remember, how do we express opinions? How do we um, agree or disagree? How do we end uh, or ask for opinion and end a debate? Please write them in the chat below for our new students. And thank you, everyone, for sharing this lesson, making it beautiful. All right, let's begin. No time to waste. Our time is money. First impressions of Canada, and let's become familiar with the past clauses. So I'm going to ask you, when you came to Canada, when you came to Canada, what things tasted new or different? All right, you guys see how I started this clause? When you came to Canada. What things tasted new or different? Now, I'm going to try to answer for myself. When I arrived in Canada, I remember the fruit tasted different. Hmm. I wonder if any one of you guys can relate to that. So when I, and this is personally, truly my honest opinion. When I arrived in Canada, the fruit tasted different. And I, I'm sure most of you friends who are in Latin America can agree with me because like you know from before, I come from Armenia. And in Armenia, we still have manual farmers, which means old school farming, where people go and, and work the land, have fresh fruits. You can definitely have it tastier. I still remember actually when I was little and our neighbors from the building across from us would cut cucumber. You know, cucumber, the green, the green um, watery fruit. We would smell it. We would smell it all the way in our place. So when I first arrived in Canada, food tasted different. It tasted, honestly, a bit more plasticky to me. It lacked taste. And lack means without, less, no, lacked 
paste. All right. I want you guys to tell me and try to answer the questions down below in the chat. I appreciate you guys for sharing the lesson and in, in, um, and interacting with us. All right. Beautiful stuff. So let's continue. I want you to notice how I put the sentence together. When I arrived in Canada in the past tense, I remember the fruit tasted different. The fruit tasted different. All right. Let's do one more. What things sounded new or different to you when you came to Canada? You guys, I love their interactions off of our Instagram, and I'm looking forward to reading your answers. Would you mind telling me what things sounded new or different to you? Welcome, Jenny. Welcome on board, everybody. Mad Mods are Sunshine Top. Oh, I like that. Beautiful name. You guys, off of our Facebook, off of our Instagram, what things sounded different to you or new? Well, I'm going to tell you what sounded different to me. When I arrived in Canada, I remember the ambulance sound was different. Right. So, you know, ambulances, they have a different siren. And siren is what we call that noise. All right. Lucero off of our Instagram says, the tacos are so different. I miss Mexican tacos. I can definitely relate. Mexican food, street food is much tastier and more flavorable. Flavorful, you can also say more flavorful. Beautiful. Well, at least I hope soon you'll be able to go and visit. Maybe get a taste of that food back. All right. I love it. So for me, the sound of the ambulance was different when I came to Canada. So notice, I can switch them both ways, right? I can switch them both ways, back and forth. I can start with when I first came to Canada, the sound of the ambulance was different, or the sound of the ambulance was different when I first came to Canada. And I want you guys to keep in mind, notice how I paused in the middle. When I start with when, when I came to Canada, I remember the sound of the ambulance was different. So there's a little pause here. Or the sound of the ambulance was different when I came to Canada. There's no pause. It's straightforward. Mad Mon R says, I've never... Uh-oh, I'm going to come back to you with this. Be careful. I've never visited Canada, but a friend told me that Venezuelan food is uh, very tasty too. Hmm. I've actually heard of a Venezuelan hamburger here. A friend of mine was telling me the other day about a Venezuelan burger, and he said it was much more flavorful. Right. He said he really enjoyed it too. Okay. So I want you to be careful and pay attention to your sentence here. I'm going to break it down. You guys pay, pay attention too. I wish I could show you, but since it's off of our Instagram, I will not be able to. So keep your ears peeled and your eyes pricked. Let's go. I've never visited. Let me show you real quick the lesson one more time. When I came, what tasted? I have never visited. All right. So that's number one. I have never visited is present perfect, which is verb have plus verb three. I've never visited Canada. But a friend told me that Venezuelan food is very tasty too. Now, keep this in mind. When you say the noun, when you say the thing, and then you add a pronoun right after, you don't need to use too much because if you say it in your sentence means Venezuelan food, right? So you don't need to say Venezuelan food, it is quite tasty as well. Either you say Venezuelan food or you say it. One of the two. In English, I'm going to give you a secret, you guys. In English, people are lazy. We're lazy. If we can say it in two words, we'd rather use two words. Right? We don't like to, to use any extensive language unnecessarily. Unlike French or Spanish or even Arabic for that matter. These languages value um, expressionism, value emotionality, value poetry. They enjoy 
over describing something. English is a very straightforward and practical language. Oops, I almost dropped my camera. Wow. <laughs> All right. So like I said, English is a very straightforward and practical language. We definitely don't like to add unnecessary things. So one more time. Let's see. I've never visited Canada, but a friend told me that Venezuelan food is very tasty too. All right, welcome on board, Mr. Batete Omelette and Clara. I love it. I can see our Instagram folks today. You are on fire. Let's see if you can be the Facebook crowd from last class. All right, you guys, let's continue. Now I'm looking forward to your answers. What things smelled new or different? If you've never been to Canada before, try thinking of a different country you visited. Maybe India, maybe the Caribbean, perhaps you've been to Cuba, I don't know, any different country than yours. What things smelled new or different? And if that was too hard for you guys, what things looked new or different, right? So you have many things starting from the streets to buildings, police and ambulance cars, you name it, even the people, what things look different. Or in general, what was new or different for you? And remember, from before, we're saying when, you see, when you came to Canada, you see that? When you came to Canada, and then tell me what smelled different, what looked different, and what was new or different. Let's see. I want you to use a correct sentence this time too, eh? Give me, give it a shot. What was new or different? What things look different? Let's see. I can tell you for myself as well while you guys think about it. It doesn't have to be Canada. It could be any country. Let us know. And those of you who just joined us, welcome on board. It's definitely going to be an interesting class. Please let us know in the chat below where you're from so I can send you highs and energy, lots of love. All right, and remember, share this lesson with your friends so that more people can join us and make it a merrier class. Remember what, what we talked about from before? The more, the merrier. You got it. No, okay. So in my opinion, I'm going to give you my, my answer real quick and continue picking it up from there. So for me, when I arrived to Canada, buildings look different. The buildings look different because in Armenia, actually, we are known for black asphalt rocks. And we also have red volcanic rocks. It is, it is quite common to see buildings with their facades. And facade means how the building looks like, right? To see building facades made out of what you would think very expensive red and black volcanic rocks. And... They're really breathtaking. If you haven't been, you should definitely go check it out. So when I came here, the buildings look different. They all have, they mostly had brick facades, right? Okay, our answers are coming in. Naomi, welcome on board. Missed you there. She says, when I came to Canada, winter looked different. Oh, I can bet you. I bet you did. Beautiful, well done. Lucero says, when I came to Canada, the beach looked different. <laughs> <laughs> I can feel your, your heartbreak there, Lucero. So you miss the food, you miss the beaches, you miss the sun. I can relate, absolutely. Josh Nese, oh, welcome back. When I came to Canada, hotels look different. Oh, for real? That's a, that's a first for me. Can you elaborate? When I say elaborate, can you please say more in the chat? I'm definitely interested and curious in seeing in which way. How were the hotels different? Good job, you guys. I'm going to give you a screen five. All right. Today... Our Instagram group is on fire. Let's continue. So you guys got this point? Now, I'm going to take you, instead of when you arrive, I'm going to take you one step back. Before you came to Canada, did you look at pictures of the country? And notice the tenses here. We're all using the past tense. Before you came to Canada, did you look at pictures of the country? Did you read about the country before you came? What did you learn? Those kinds of things. Um, you, you're free to choose whichever answer that interests you the most. 
and then we'll go into after you arrived in Canada. Uh, Joshna said she came from Mauritius, which is a tropical island. Oh, wow. That must have been a savage change. That must have been a brutal change. And notice if you guys remember when I told you for the Isles, if you are outside of Canada or for the SLE, if you are already inside the Canada, that we need to use adjectives and adverbs as well as idioms. That's why I always stress those idioms and phrasal verbs as well. Remember, I gave you a homework last week. Hope you did it. All right. Because I came from Mauritius. Uh, so it's not only a tropical island, but it's also quite touristic. So, yeah, here you'll always see heating. You'd see bed covers and everything would be more warm and cozy and all of that good stuff we love. Uh, we have an answer. I can see our Facebook group starting to act up. When I came to Canada, I learned French. You don't have to say I learned to speak. I learned French. Good job. Actually, speaking of French, when I first came to Montreal, because you people don't know that I actually am not, I'm not from Quebec originally. I come from Ontario. And in Ontario, we only use English. French is, is not that common unless you're in Ottawa. Those of you people who are planning to come here or those of you who are looking for other places to work, you can keep this information in mind. So in Ottawa, they're almost bilingual, almost equally bilingual. So they speak both French and English almost just the same but i came from the south closer to london ontario if you guys heard about it or heard of it before so yeah when i came here the first thing that sounded different when i came to quebec was the language french absolutely all right beautiful so good job i love the interactions uh, naomi says before i came to canada i've been told that its people are super kind <laughs> And it is true. Yes, they are. Absolutely. I don't know if you should say I've or I was told. Okay, I love it. Now you're starting to read my mind. Actually, no, neither. We should say when we have two actions in the past, one happened before the other, and they're both done complete, done and dusted. The first one is always past perfect. So on your first try, you were close. You were very close. Actually, before I came to Canada, I had been told that its people are really kind. Absolutely. You got it. You got it. I'll give you another example there to keep in mind. Say, when we arrived at the train station, the train had already gone. When we arrived at the train station, the train had already gone. Right. So to remember that two actions in the past, one happened before the other. The first one is always past perfect, which is had plus verb three. You got it. And this is the only time we use it. There is absolutely no other use for past perfect. This is the only one. Winning. I love it. All right, you guys, let's continue. I think this is easy for you. I'm going to turn it up a little bit. So after you arrived in Canada, did you visit any interesting places or meet any interesting people? I'm sure you guys have some experience with that. Any interesting places or interesting people? Let's see. As a matter of fact, I met many interesting people after I arrived in Canada. Most of whom, and keep, listen, notice how I'm, how I'm using my sentence here. I'm saying that so that you can emulate. And when I say emulate, I mean copy, assimilate, emulate, right? So I met many interesting people after, after I arrived in Canada, most of whom were artistic. They were handy people. When you say handy men or handy women, it means they're good with their hands. And handy with a Y, huh? keep that in mind. Handy man with a Y, handy woman with a Y. I met many artistic people even when they were handy people you'd be surprised absolutely what about you guys did you meet anybody interesting did you visit any interesting places let me know where you went what you've seen i haven't seen the niagara falls yet although you guys would be surprised coming from ontario but i did see the great lakes and that was great now 
while you guys write me your answer, I'm going to go on and give you more details about our grammar lesson for today. So these words introduce time clauses. Welcome on board, Sebastian. Please let us know where you're from. And I'll tell you what a clause is in a minute. But these words, whenever you see these words, remember that they are introducing a time clause before, after, as soon as, when, while. So, after I came to Canada, I started skiing, for example. As soon as I came to Canada, I had my bank accounts open, right? So, as soon as I came to Canada, I is a subject. Came is a verb. But... If I say, as soon as I came to Canada and stop, do you understand something? As soon as I came to Canada and so there's something missing here. Keep that in mind. I'm going to get, get there in a minute. No, right. Let's continue. So if you kept that in mind and figured this out, I was looking for your I was looking for the comments here, Facebook and Instagram. There's nothing, so I'm gonna continue with it. A clause, my friends, is an incomplete sentence. A, a clause is a phrase, it's an incomplete sentence, which means something is missing. And here, what is missing is not the subject, not the verb. You beautiful people already know that a sentence has three elements. We must have one subject, we must have one verb and we must have meaning. So if I said, when I came to Canada and stop, what's missing? Meaning. There's no meaning here, right? So this is a clause. All right, beautiful people, let's continue. Welcome on board, everybody. Carolina, welcome on board. Please, guys, let us know where you're from and remember to share the lesson so that more people can join us. Now, how do the how do we put together these clauses look at this we use one of these words and if you ask me which words these words after before as soon as when and while one of these words plus a subject plus a verb is a time clause i love it and look at the bottom right here you'd see punctuation rules remember when we said at the beginning how there was a pause remember there was a mini pause when I first came to Canada, the sounds of the ambulance were different. There's a pause. And we represent that in writing. People of you taking the IELTS, people of you taking the comprehension and writing in the SLE, this is important. You need to remember this comma. Otherwise, you will lose marks. Otherwise, remember that one as well for later. All right. Oh, Victor is in the house. I'm looking forward to seeing more fire from the Instagram crowd. And I have some games for you coming right up. So, after I arrived in Montreal, comma, pause, I looked for an apartment. Now, what does it say here? Put a comma at the end of the time clause when the time clause comes first. Here, after I arrived in Montreal is the time clause and I have a comma. Now, if I switch it, I looked for an apartment after I arrived in Montreal. No comma, no pause. Welcome, Leon. I, I'm, I'm happy seeing new faces. You guys, I love my friends from Instagram and Facebook. We already know each other, but if you're new, please let us know where you're from. Great. And finally, when people greet each other in Canada, they usually shake hands. And my question for you is... What does it mean to greet? Have you ever heard of this expression before? Meet and greet. Meet and greet. Greet people. That's basically, what do you think greet means? Hmm, I wonder. Greet. And it's E, double E, not E-A. When you say E-A, that's great. And great is an adjective, which means fantastic, beautiful. Greet is not the same. All right. I have Paula in the house, Leon, Victor, please you guys let us know where you're from so that I can send you much love and positive vibes. And I would like also to know our crowd. So if you're already in Canada, please visit our website as you can see below. 
we do have special offers. I'm sorry, my friends from outside of Canada, we have extra special offers for those who are already here. But for you, you can always reach out to us by email or visit the website and we'll definitely take good care of you. All right. So, oh, I can already see the answers coming up. Let's see. Uh, welcome, Colombia. Much love to Latin America. After I started to work, I started to speak French. That's okay. I can also say I started speaking. Both are correct. Actually, I would say I started speaking. Why? English speakers, again, are lazy. To speak are two words. Speaking is one word, so I would go with the easiest. All right. Naomi is from France, and Clara is from Argentina. Welcome on board, everybody. I love it. So you guys, are you ready for this? I have a game coming right up. Keep your eyes peeled. I'm going to show you what it is. So if you're immigrating to Canada, is finding a gym or a place to work out something you do B before you arrive? A, -S -A as soon as you arrive. A, after a few weeks or something you do. W, when you have the time. What do you guys think? I want you to tell me your answer, only choosing something that is highlighted in red. So what do you guys think? If you're immigrating to Canada, is finding a gym or a place to work out something you do before you arrive, as soon as you arrive, after a few weeks, or something you do when you have the time? Let me know. Madmad R says, after I decided to move to Canada, I started to learn English. Oh, wow. Beautiful. Good job, buddy. Good job. I'm going to stop this right now just to sh give you a screen five. Very impressive. Give me a screen five. Uh -huh. Well done. I love it. Okay. Answers are coming in. Lucero says, A. Hey. Let's see. What do you guys think? If you're immigrating to Canada, is finding a gym or a place to work out something you do after a few weeks? I think that's okay. I think doing it after a few weeks is not bad at all. Beautiful. So you see what she did here? People on Facebook can see her answer. People on Instagram, she only told me A. Now I want you to do the same for these ones. I'm going to give you information. And I want to hear your answer only by B, A, S, A, A, and W4 before, as soon as, after a few weeks, or when you have the time. Ready, set, go. So, when should you register for Medicare in your province? So, this is regarding immigration purposes. When should you register for Medicare in your province. Clara says, hey, after a few weeks, hmm, you would be surprised. I'll be honest there with you, Clara. Here in Canada, things are very well set up, but you have to keep in mind that processes take time. So, if you wait a few weeks, you might end up waiting much longer until the final MediCard arrives. So let's see. Actually, if I were you, I would do it as soon as you arrive. So as soon as you arrive, register for Medicare in your province. Clara, you got it. Well done. Well done. Madmont R, well done. You see you guys who have been here before, you already know. As soon as you arrive, register because it might take time. All right, one more. When should you register your kids in schools? What do you guys think? Before you arrive, as soon as you arrive to Canada, when you have the time, or after a few weeks? What do you guys think? Our phone number is downstairs at the bottom left of the screen so that it doesn't bother you guys. What do you think? And here's our Instagram for those of you. Clara says, A was for the first, oh, okay, sorry. There's a little bit of a delay here, so you got to forgive me with it. Sometimes I lose my patience, and as a teacher, I should learn to cultivate. Uh-oh. 
cultivate. Look at this word. If you use it, it will definitely boost your vocab in your IELTS or your SLE exam. Cultivate, grow, nurture, right? I should cultivate patience. Thank you for understanding, though. I appreciate it. So let's go back to the answers and see one more time. Hmm. Register children in schools. I have two people saying as soon as you come to Canada. And now you guys are getting it. Exactly. Exactly right. Because you know how it is and it takes time. The processes will take forever sometimes. Great stuff. So you better hit the iron while it's hot. And I'm going to pause the stream again to tell you guys this is, a, this is an idiom. Hit the iron while it's hot. You got to do it as soon as you can. Okay, let's get back to it. Good job. I love it. So when should you make sure you know what you can and cannot bring into the country? So as any other self-respecting country with sovereignty and their own rules, their own ecology, there are things that are allowed and others that are forbidden, things you cannot bring into the country. For example, you'd be surprised that seeds seeds like plant seeds you'd be surprised that seeds the, the seeds you eat or the seeds that you grow in the ground are forbidden same thing in australia for example also if you're talking about australia they have many pets that are forbidden you cannot bring plants because they're worried about bugs invading their natural habitat so my question back to you Oh, look at you guys. Bernice, Clara, Madmon R said, you should know these before before you come, my friend. You don't want to wait until the last minute for this one and then end up on the wrong side of the law, pissing people off at the border. The customs should never be cross with you. They should always like you. You must know what things you can bring with you before you come. Absolutely. Well, I guess you guys get in this. Let's see one more. When should you fill out a social insurance card application to get your SIN number, your social insurance number? And these are things that are actually helping you guys know how to immigrate and what to do next. Well, at the same time, we're learning English. <laughs> I love it. So, you guys, when do you think you should fill out your social insurance card application? And by the way, never ever ever no never under any circumstance share your sin number with anyone not a friend not a family member not i don't care who all right sometimes even when i go apply to jobs lrdg is different they are a very respectable company but sometimes i even refuse to share my sin number say hey if you want it that bad then maybe we're not a good fit especially if it's kind of a shady company or whatnot. So be careful about that. Clara says you should apply as soon as possible. Well, as a matter of fact, social insurance application can wait a bit because if you arrived here legally, as a matter of fact, it is truly quick. The process is truly quick and we have to give Service Canada an applaud here. Very well done. So. If you can do it as soon as you arrive, that will be great. Otherwise, it'll be okay to wait a few weeks as well. No worries. When should you open a bank account, you guys? What do you think? This is easy. It's the same everywhere because banks are private institutions. They're not government. They're not public institutions. So they're the same like everywhere else you go. When should you open a bank account? What do you guys think? Is it as soon as you come? Is it after you come? Is it when you arrive or before you arrive? Can you even open a bank account before you arrive? I don't think so. I think you've, you've got to be in a country, right? You have to be in a country to open a bank account. That's for sure. So you cannot do it before. What do you guys think? I have an as soon as you arrive. I would actually say it's okay to open a bank account after a few weeks. But again, if you want to do it as soon as you arrive, be my guest. And I'm going to pause the stream here once again and remind you guys, be my guest. 
is an expression or an idiom if you want. I'm not asking you come to my house, visit me, be my guest. <laughs> no, but I'm saying be my guest is just another way of saying suit yourself. You do you. Whatever. Remember this from before? Who knows who was here on Tuesday? Whatever floats your boat. You got it. Hmm. You, Clara, you don't have to do it immediately, but you can if you want to. Right? I think they might need a SIN number for that. So if you already have a PR card, you're free to go. You can do it immediately. Otherwise, you may have to wait until you get a PR card or another proof of um, residence, maybe. If you have, if you rented out a place, yes, you can. But you cannot just walk in and open a bank account. You need proof of residence or status, per se. Right. Okay, one more. Locate a family doctor and the nearest hospital in case of an emergency. So you move in. You're going around. You're going around the neighborhood. You're taking a look, seeing where is what, where are the schools, the parks, the grocery stores. When should you locate a family doctor and the nearest hospital in case of emergency? Should you wait after a few weeks? Should you just leave it for whenever you have the time? Or do it as soon as you arrive? As soon as you arrive. What do you guys think? Oh, Lucero off of Facebook says, ASA, as soon as I arrive. And that is correct. You got that right. Family doctors and especially a nearest hospital for emergency. We need to do this as soon as we arrive. Okay, you guys, I think you're enjoying the process here. So I'm going to go ahead and give you some more. When should you discover the city you live in? Like, for example, go to museums, attend the concerts, visit movies. What do you guys think? Should you do this? Should you should you check out museums, um, attend concerts? Especially here in Montreal, they have a lot of activities. From open air shows to concerts to live performances, stand-up comedians. We have many museums. So when should you do that? Should you do that as soon as you arrive in Canada or a few weeks after or when you have the time, right? What do you guys think? Let me see. I'm loving the answers. And Clara says, whenever you have the time. Actually, that is true. I don't know what D is, but actually, you're right. It's not a D, it's a W. Um, yes, actually, we have a question here in the, in the Instagram chat. Do we save those lessons? Yes. If you go back once the live stream is over, you will be able to replay the entire session. However, if I'm not mistaken, I think on Instagram, they are taken down. Phrasal verb, which means removed. They are taken down after 24 hours. After one day, they're gone. So try to check our Facebook page or reach out to us and we might be able to, to give you a copy. No, right. So let's get back to it. We said when. Let me actually go ahead and try to change this. Let me try to change it so that you guys don't get the wrong impression that I'm sloppy and that this one pass. Mm, voila. All right, there you go. So you guys were right. It is when you have the time. When you have the time. Amazing. Let's do one more. I have a couple more and then a different game for you. Why should you join a club, practice a hobby, get to meet new people? Is it important to join a club and get to meet new people? Oh, absolutely. It is crucial. It is so vital to your mental and psychological health because when you come here you need to be a part of something you need to surround yourself with a group of people otherwise trust me you might lose your mind you might go cuckoo go crazy especially during the winter times when you have several months of snow and cold 
for those of you who come from warmer climates, it might be hard, it might be challenging. So you need to have a group of people. It is absolutely essential. But what do you guys think? Okay, actually we have uh, we have help. We will post all the class classes next week. So you stay tuned and enjoy. Thank you, Lucero. Actually, not after you arrive, when you have the time, right? When you have the time. Because remember, you just immigrated to Canada. You're new here. Everything is new. You have so many things on your mind from paperwork to finding an apartment to opening bank accounts, applying for paperwork, um, seeing the hospitals, you know, settling your kids at schools. There are so many things going on that it is helpful. It is crucial, but you don't want to do it right away when you have the time. Just keep it in mind that it will definitely help you and make a world of a difference. It'll make a world of a difference. And that is another idiom. Finally, our last sentence of this game. When should you research English or French lessons? What do you guys think? Hmm. Lucero says we can actually join a club or practice a hobby from before we come to Canada. I think maybe that's okay. Perhaps if you know someone here, they can help you out. But it, it, it was very hard for me, actually. For me, it was challenging to do that from before I came because I need to know where I'll be settling. I need to find myself an apartment. And I need to understand the country first before I join a group, right? Beautiful. All right. So what do you guys think? One more time. Research for English and uh-huh. That is, you can do it after. But actually, I'm convinced that Lucero has got a point too. So I'm going to change that into B. You can do it from before. And that's what you beautiful people are doing with us. You're preparing yourselves for that coming exam or for arriving here. Great stuff. So let me go ahead and show it whenever it decides to go. All right. Research English from before you come. Exactly. One more time. I'm going to continue with another game. So I'm just going to show you real quick. What, you, what else you need to do? As soon as you come, you need to get a telephone. After a few weeks, you must start preparing yourself to find work in the country, find work in Canada. And one thing you can do before coming is learn about the country, its history, politics, geography. This is quite the diverse country, eh? Now, one more game. Let's see who's up and running. My, my Instagram gang, you have been on fire. Thank you so much. So, as always, three words are similar and one is different. Challenge, coward, test, and competition. Three of them are the same. One of them is different. Which one do you guys think is different? Please write the word in the chat below. Let me show them one more time. Challenge, coward, test, and competition. Obviously, we have challenge and competition are more or less the same. We have a coward and a test. Could you probably discover which one is different, which one is not? Let me see in the chat, somebody, anybody, going once, going twice. All right, let's try to check it out this time. Actually, it is test. Test is the different word. Why? Because a challenge is a competition, right? A challenge, I challenge you, come compete against me. So challenge and competition are the same. And when you say a coward, a coward is someone who runs away, runs away from competition, runs away from competition. Can you tell if somebody is coward without having a competition or a standard to me, to match? No, you cannot. Okay. 
Now, some of you people can tell me maybe test is a competition. Well, I understand, but a test is not necessarily a competition. Look, we're all here in one class, right? The, the Facebook gang, the Insta group crowd, we're all here together in one class. And say we have a test at the end. Is the test done to prove who's number one? No. What is it done for? It's done to assess each person's language mastery, what skills you have and what skills you still need to acquire. So it's not technically a competition, right? It's not a competition. A test is a test. No, right, beautiful. Let's do one more. All right, all right. Adapt, adjust, resist, and change. One more time. Adapt, adjust, resist and change welcome on board everybody i love seeing your beautiful faces please let us know where you're from in the comments below so that you can enrich us and i can welcome you properly so for those of you who just came we're playing a game we're almost late because our, our lesson will end in a few minutes but if you want come back next week on tuesday at 6 p.m eastern which is almost 45 minutes before now and you can catch the lesson right from the beginning. All right, you beautiful people. Mad Month R says change. All right, let's see. Adapt, adjust, change, resist. Ah, we have change. Clara says resist. Let me see. We have two going for change and one going for resist. Actually, Clara, you get it. Beautiful. We got a winner in the house. Da -da 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 -da. I love it. Good job. Give me a screen five. Uh -huh. Now let's explain. When you adapt, adapt is taking change and moving with it, right? Some people give you new tasks. You have to do um, different situations, living situations. You say, no problem. I take it. This is adapt, right? Now look at this one here. Change is a vital part of adaptation when you adapt you accept change change is part of adaptation and adjustment is actually a synonym which means another way of saying adapt adapt change adjust so the one is resist when you say resist this is resist oh no oh no i don't want i don't want this is, this is not for me get out of here keep your distance i don't want it no 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 this is resist Okay, good job. All right, one more. Let's see. Delicious, tasty, appetizing, and tasteless. What do you guys think? Delicious, uh, tasty, appetizing, and tasteless. Let's see who will get it first. I got my eyes on you, Facebook crowd. My Facebook crowd have, have fallen today to the Instagram group come on you guys my instagram gang are beating you people i want answers let's see tasteless mad mode arts is tasteless and absolutely correct you are absolutely right delicious is tasty and appetizing is like hmm this is great for the stomach. It's uh, very appetizing. Makes me drool. Give, good job. Give me a screen five. Uh -huh. I love it. Yes. Good job. So it is uh, tasteless. Let's do one more. Karen, welcome on board. Missed you today. All right. So you know the rule. You know the game. You know the deal. Choose the odd word out. Which one doesn't belong is different. Rules, instructions, directions, and freedom. Rules, instructions, directions, and freedom. What do you guys think? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Queen Shoot. Je ne parlais pas en français dans la classe parce que c'est une classe d'anglais. So we probably prefer to keep it in English. So we have, for those of you who don't know what's going on, and we have a request. Can you please speak a little bit in, in French? And I told her, we don't speak we don't speak french in class because this is an english class 
but I am absolutely sure you can do it. If you can stay focused with your ears open and your eyes pricked, you can definitely get it. No, right. Oh my God, I missed you guys. So freedom, freedom on both Facebook and Instagram. Which one came first? Which one came first? Ah, Karen came first. Welcome on board. And this one goes to our Facebook crowd. Good job, you guys. Good job, you guys. Absolutely freedom. And freedom is paramount, is most important to me. We're going to talk about this a little bit more. But let's play one more. Take part in, cooperate, watch, and participate. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Take part in something. Take part in the games. Take part in the lesson. Cooperate together. Cooperate for the lesson. Watch and participate. Let's participate in this class. What do you guys think? Let's go, let's go, let's go. Who's going to get it? Watch. Woohoo! Karen is on fire again. Welcome on board. Welcome on board. This one goes to Facebook again. Beautiful stuff. Watch. Amazing. So, politeness, rudeness, respect, and good manners. Polite, politeness. You got that right. You got that right. Good job, you guys. Good job, you guys. Instagram. Beautiful. Politeness, rudeness, respect, and good manners. Politeness, respect, good manners. Rudeness. Rudeness. Respect, politeness, and good manners. What do you guys think? Let me show it back again real quick. Who's going to get it first? Who's going to get it first? Going once and going... Uh-oh. Mad Mont R goes first this time. And the degree is... What's our score? It is... Four to two. All right. Beautiful, you guys. Instagram is killing it. Rudeness. Amazing. Amazing. Now I want you to take things that are in your home country and compare them to those in Canada. For example, let's look at bread. I'll give you an example from mine. Where I come from, like you know, you already know I come from Armenia. So we, our bread is called lavash. And you can only find this in Armenia. I'll show you, for example, when I came here, how did I make the comparing, comparing and contrasting the two? So... In my country, bread is usually flat and round, while people in Canada eat different kinds of bread. White bread is very popular, right? So I'm comparing bread. In my country, bread is usually flat. And of course, you can put the name of your country. You don't have to actually say in my country. But I want you to choose any one of those topics and compare. Up to you. You choose the one you like. So food a house, sports, freedom, something expensive, and a good husband. Let's see. Let's see. You guys, choose any topic you want and compare that in your country to that same thing in Canada. Let's see. In my country, bread is, and notice here, I'm using the present, present simple, right? In my country... Bread is usually flat and round, while people in Canada eat. So they're both now in simple present. Why? It's a fact and a habit. In both places, it's a fact and a habit. So you guys, let me know what you choose to compare. Choose any one of those topics and write it down. Now, in the meantime, since we mentioned freedom twice, I'm going to give you a little... Um, daring topic, shall I say? While wait, while I wait for your answers. You know, people are different, and everyone prioritizes different things in life. So, different values, basically. Now, what I've seen from being in around the world and interacting with people is there are three main values that different people have it as number one. First one is equality. So some people have the, the highest value is equality. That is what they fight for. That is what they're after. So these people usually call for more socialist or leftist parties because their main 
value is equality. I'm not saying they're right. I'm not saying they're wrong. I'm saying people are different. Now, another one is stability. And I'm still waiting for you guys. I'm looking forward for you to compare. Don't forget my question. Compare one of those things from your country to ours. All right. So people who look for stability usually go for countries that are monarchies. And monarchy means there's a king and queen. Because monarchies tend to be very stable, very little change. It's good for business, but it's boring for young people. It's usually unequal because the, the ruling family, the big business people, they have all the money while everybody else got nothing. Or not nothing necessarily, but usually got much less, significantly less. Why? We call this generational accumulation because if your grandfather were rich, he, he raised your father or mother to be rich, and they raised you to be rich, so you become richer in time. Okay. So these are the people who prefer stability. This is their highest um, trait. And you have a third, third value, which is freedom. People who value freedom above all. So you're free to say whatever you want, however you want, as long as you pay the price, you pay the consequences. And unfortunately... For the rest of the world but somewhat fortunately for us the united states number one and somewhat canada to a certain degree we are a people who does value freedom and freedom can only be protected with a militia which means weapons and free speech all right so we have clara says in my country the most popular sport is football with a double o foot like the foot football while in canada uh oh i see what happened here so here actually we need an it because you didn't say the most popular sport again so here we do need an it so again in my country the most popular sport is football while in canada it is hockey why because it means the most popular sport right you got it beautiful Mad Mont R says, in my country, people used to think a close way about jobs, relationships, remember that S, and others, other things with a G, and other things with a G. In Canada, there is freedom. I absolutely agree. I absolutely agree. Now, that being said, everything has a price. When you have freedom, sometimes you might have clashes or people argue or disagree that's why we value open communication we we talk to each other we allow each other one another to express our opinions and nobody goes and shoots somebody in the face for no reason and that's what gives you a strong society all right you guys i think this was everything i had for you today i really hope you enjoyed our lesson please thank you so much first of all for making this a wonderful lesson i always enjoy spending our time together and Please remember, next week on Tuesday, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which means almost an hour from now, we will meet again for something new and exciting. You guys take care. Thank you so much for showing up. And I'll see you next week. Have a lovely weekend. Screen five. Bye-bye <laughs> for now.